Hello, hello. that when you're a high carb athlete, you have very tense, small diameter tubes. But if you don't have the water and sodium to fill those tubes, you get low blood pressure, you feel faint, you don't perform. Right. So that's another one. Um, I don't know, I'm all off the top of my head. Cue me if you need to, but <laughs> but we got Vespa in there. Vespa's that's a key the part. only one we didn't do, yeah. Yeah, Vespa's a key part of it because that's who I work with. And, and I've had somebody do some uh, data gathering uh, to see how Vespa worked because she got really curious about this and she did a bunch of testing on various athletes, various diets, various sports. And she found that Vespa increased fat oxidation anywhere from a half a gram to one full gram a minute. So it definitely does. It helps the liver function better and it does it working with your physiology rather than working against it. Okay. It's, it's not shortcutting it the way you do when you do gels or caffeine. You're not circumventing your own natural physiology. Um, another big one is strategic carbs. And that's once you got that fat burning base in, you really got your aerobic um, function way up, that level of carbohydrate tolerance goes up so big that if you're willing to do the work to become a really well aerobically fit fat adapted athlete, you don't even think about it as a diet anymore because it doesn't matter. You can slam the carbs and it, you know, whether it's a social event, like, you know, your kids having a birthday party and you got to have that obligatory piece of cake and ice cream, it's not going to kill you. Or you go out to beer and pizza with friends. It's not going to kill you. You may feel like crap an hour later, but, yeah. but you're, it's not going to kill you, but you can also carb load in the traditional way of having some carbs the day before you're racing. It won't impact your, your, um, fat performance, it'll actually make you go faster without doing it. And it'll give you that push you need to be able to give yourself that adaptive stress where you're, it's going to signal to your body, I got to get stronger. And that's the problem with keto is you can, you can go all day, but you never can push yourself. And if you try to push yourself, you can dig yourself a hole. And I don't know if you've seen much of this, but nowadays I get as many people who've dug themselves adrenal holes trying to push, push performance on keto yeah. as people who are eating, pushing gels and getting GI distress. You know, I mean, I'm sure you're seeing that now with keto people. Yeah, actually, that was going to be one of my points when you were just saying that it's that when you, your, your adrenal fatigue, when you're on keto, because there is no like glucose utilization. Um, right. And your body's trying to find the glucose it doesn't have. Exactly. And I want to use the term adrenal stress versus adrenal fatigue, because one of the doctors I work with said full blown adrenal fatigue is like that person's going to die. Yeah. I like adrenal overdrive or adrenal underdrive. <laughs> yeah. I call it adrenal stress because yeah. your adrenals are say talking to you and saying this isn't working. So it's like, like I said, I'm a big believer in ketosis. And, and when you're fat adapted, really well fat adapted in terms of performance and health, that occasional um, bludgeoning of carbs won't hurt you. And, and once again, I thought this through in terms of that evolutionary context. And, and in, in the environment that shaped us in that evolutionary context, it makes perfect sense because when fruit was ripe or berries were ripe or tubers were ripe or we found honey, those were rare occurrences 
when that food source was available for a short period. So we could bludgeon ourselves. And, you know, it's, it's typical carb coma thing. You eat a bunch of carbs, you pass out, you wake up a couple hours later and you're fat, you're, you're, you're full, you're bloated. You don't feel so good, but guess what? You're hungry again. You're alive. <laughs> you're alive and you're hungry again. So it makes total sense. The method of, of the insulin response, the fat conversion, the fat storage in that context. And like I say, it makes, you know, back then we were doing it three to five times a year, not three to five times a day for decades. Like right. we're doing it now, like, like high carb athletes are doing it now. You know, they're told to eat instead of having the three big sugar spikes a day, you're having six or seven smaller ones, but you're still having all this sugar put through your system. So it makes sense in the evolutionary sense, but not, not, the, not the modern sense. And so once you're fat adapted, we're going back to that state where you can. And then the beauty of this is anybody who's been doing this for six months to a year, depending on where they're starting and how fast they catch on, uh, especially the people who've done, done it for 18 months or two years, they say, I don't even think about a diet anymore. I eat what I want. I don't think about it because you just don't have those restrictions. The more sedentary you are, the more restrictive the diet becomes. And that's where that keto diet, like if you're sedentary, you got to be real strict uh, about your calories and your macros. And, and, and it's like I say, if you're sedentary from an evolutionary standpoint, you're actually in a disease state. If you're not, if it's not just sedentary for a few days of recovery, you, you really got to be active and, and really be signaling to your cells. You need to get stronger and fitter and build mitochondria. Otherwise it's just going to downregulate your mitochondrial health over time. So I'm going to summarize that a little bit just to kind of clarify. And then we have about a little less than 10 minutes left, a little more than 10 minutes left. So what I want to do after that is move into a little bit more about Vespa, how it was developed. Um, but just so you guys understand OFM or optimized fat metabolism, what is it doing for you? It's working with your own body's natural physiology, right? How your body is meant to function. It improves yeah. physical performance, faster recovery, improve body composition. So when we're talking about leaning out. I don't like to say weight loss because it's not always weight loss, but it definitely can be a ratio. It's um, usually like, a default uh, that's weight loss. But like I was saying to somebody today, um, cause they were saying they hadn't lost a lot of weight. It's like, and you probably have seen this with you, the scale that says, shows you've lost a little bit of weight, but you lost, you feel like you lost a lot in terms of how your clothes fit and what people are saying. Right. You lose the bloat, you lose the the fat, yeah. it just starts to lean. Yeah, but you increase at the same time, you're e increasing muscle and bone density. Exactly. Um, mental focus, stability. We're talking about, uh, you know, potentiating. Yeah, that's a big one because when the more fat adapted you are, and I'm, and that means you don't downregulate your glu your ability to use glucose on point when you need it, right? Um, the more fat adapted you are, the more blood sugar stable you are. So for, for executive function, emotional stability, and for real fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, because some of the first people to use Vespa and win on it before I was involved were, were ice skaters and hockey players. And, and one of the best examples is 2002 with Alexei Yagudin, the Russian figure skater. He trained and performed on Vespa. And what he, he and his coach saw, that was a year, he, he was the guy who won the Olympic men's figure skating with perfect scores at Salt Lake City. Okay, he not only won the Olympics, cleaned house of the Olympics, but that year when we sponsored him and he was using Vespa, he won every competition he entered. And that will, they changed the rule so that, that record of performance will never be repeated. But get this, a men's long program is only, is less than four minutes long. That's the long program. And so it requires this, these quick bursts of energy and super fine motor skills, right? And it wasn't just because he was able to use, be fat adapted and in that zone of fat, what I call blood sugar stability, um, which is when your blood sugar is stable, because the first thing to go before you notice fatigue is your fine motor skills. So if you're a basketball player or soccer player, your shooting isn't going to be as good. If you're a figure skater, you're going to start to lose uh, that fine motor. And that's what they found with him is his coach figure skating. You train with your coach watching you. And as soon as you start to get sloppy, you're off the ice because you're either going to do the move wrong or you're going to fall and hurt yourself. And what Alexi found with the Vespa is he could train a lot longer and just get that muscle memory. So honed into doing it perfectly that he could do these triple axles perfectly without even thinking about it. Right. And that's the blood sugar stability. So it doesn't just, it's not just an endurance stamina thing. It's 
it's for executive function, motor skills, emotional stability. The more fat adapted you are, the more stable you are. Right. Cause you don't have the fluctuations of glucose. I know I'm yeah. very reactive, which means hypoglycemia, meaning I take in some sugar and I bonk or get real tired. Right. Yeah, it's a distress signal. When your blood sugar goes down, it's a just, it's signaling a fight or flight response. Exactly. But on a fat adapted diet, doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm it's like, sure. and that's part of the problem with the fat adaptation is we don't get so urgent about it. It's like, yeah, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it gets me in trouble a little bit, but that's all right. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, it got, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> it makes me a little bit more chill. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I started this in 2000, started talking to people about it since then. And, oh, man, until Faster came out, there was a lot of arrows in my back and oh. a lot of ridicule. And I still get a little bit, but, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm used to it. Well, we have a couple of minutes. We have about seven or eight minutes. So I want to just discuss Vespa and what it is. What are the ingredients? Because, and, and also at the end, really quickly, I'm just going to dispel a myth. Fat adapted diets or optimized fat metabolism does not create higher cholesterol. I want to, I want to put that out there as a, because I know that's going to be something that is kind not, of. Not, not, not necessarily. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's really about let's 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 oh, unpack have, this just a little we because we, I know we have only a few minutes. I, yeah, I was this is the that. problem. This is the problem. We're focusing on the diet and the blood markers. We're not focusing on the metabolism. Right. And cholesterol is made up of lipids, which is fat. When you metabolize the fat, cholesterol isn't a problem. Whether it's high cholesterol, or low cholesterol, low cholesterol is actually a marker of decreased longevity and more disease. Correct. So. Um, one of the things we see with endurance athletes is there's a tendency for their cholesterol to go up, but the other more relevant, the other relevant markers go down. Like cholesterol is a contextual thing that the, exactly. the drug manufacturers have dumbed down to where we're, we're, they're scaring us into looking at one number and cholesterol is part of every cell in our body. You know that I know that the audience needs to know that without cholesterol, you don't have cells, you don't have hormones, mm -hmm. you don't have anything without cholesterol. It's but what happens is in the context of somebody with too many carbohydrates in the diet, which means you have to burn the glucose. Now, the cholesterol backs up in the in the blood and doesn't get metabolized. Right. And I'm going to stop okay. there. And I just want you to tell people we have like two minutes. Yeah. What Vespa is and yep. how they can add it into their life. Okay. Vespa is a natural product using the science of nature. And it was discovered by some Japanese entomologists who were watching the giant, giant wasp, otherwise known as the murder hornets. And they saw it could fly like 70, 100 kilometers a day and carry a food ball, the, si the a third of its weight back to feed the larva. And they, they started to say, well, what makes it do this stuff? Because in terms of strength, stamina, endurance, everything, it it has to kill the prey. It has to masticate it. It has to send it back. So they, they said, okay, they, they started following it and seeing how the larva would feed this, this, this liquid to the wasp. And this liquid contained this wasp extract, which is a, a naturally occurring oligopeptide that triggers it to burn fat in its metabolism for high level fat burning for high level uh, athletic, you know, physical performance. And so they said, well, cells animal cells are remarkably con you know similar across species like 97 98 percent same machinery and say well couldn't this do this in rats and mice and in humans so they did some mice studies and sh showed they could swim to exhaustion on vespa they could swim way longer than control rats and then they started out with people and that's what it is it works with your body's natural metabolism at the liver and, and muscles to trigger a high level of, of fat metabolism Perfect. via beta oxidation, like we talked before. And so we're using the science of nature, not the man-made lab. And I'm a, I'm a real world guy. I'm not a scientist. I, I have enough science to understand and know what science is. I'm not a scientist. I don't build the data. I don't do studies. I make it work in the real world. And that's what we've done. And when you look at the performance result of our heroes, um, you can see that these people of all ages and abilities and levels are seeing this benefit. And, and, you know, I have some of these athletes, one's a lawyer and he uses I'm gonna, it. I'm, have to yeah, cut. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry to do this to you. I'm going to just tell you guys, we can have a live with Pete. It's vespapower.com forward slash Dr. Lori, D R L O R I. You have 15% off coupon. And I promise I will bring him back shortly. Peter, I'm sorry. We can have no, 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 no. Don't apologize. It's been well, a great, we'll it's get been great. 
And uh, on that, we'll, we'll see you next week on Anti-Aging Unraveled. Thank you.